Today we'll talk about the ChickenK appliance. So welcome back to the ChickenK channel. Today's topic is the ChickenK appliance. So what's the appliance all about? Um, well, we speak of different ways how you can deploy and install actually ChickenK. So originally ChickenK is a software package to be installed on a Linux server, for example, a, a SUSE, Red Hat or Debian server. If you don't have any Linux knowledge or if you don't want to go to the command line, you can use either a virtual or a hardware ChickenK appliance. The virtual appliance is basically an image for VMware, can also be used in other virtualization platforms. The hardware appliance is offered in different sizes and both have in common that you get a web-based management of everything, of the operating system, of uh, the actual CheckMK sites, the instances. So as you know, CheckMK is multi-version and multi-instance, so you can run as many instances of CheckMK on one appliance, even in different versions. Also, you get um, a setup of an HA cluster and nice things as HTTPS. So if you don't have Linux knowledge or don't want to gain one or want to go into the deep areas of the command line, um, this can be very interesting for you. Or even if you know about Linux and anyway don't want to deal with the operating system as such, um, it's a good match. Maybe you know that CheckMK can also run in a Docker container. That's a bit similar because it's both a uh, kind of virtualization, but the Docker container images do not contain any web-based management. So that's still for the command line. Uh, so we today will look at the Check and K appliance. Um, so Robin, what do you think for, for whom is the appliance a good match? In which situations should I use the appliance or should I rather stick to the command line and install Linux myself always? Well, there's there's several reasons why you would want to use um, the CheckMK appliance. Um, one you already pointed out, that's if you don't have any Linux um, knowledge in your organization and you want still want to use CheckMK, then the appliance relieves you of that duty to maintain the um, operating system. You just get an appliance as you know it from other vendors and um, there's CheckMK built in and you can just start using it. So that would be one part that you want to make sure um, you can handle the, the technology stack. Um, another example would be that you want a standardized inter installation and maybe you're using or you have a, a very um, um, diverse setup of Linux systems and you just want to make sure your whole CheckMK infrastructure is standardized, then the appliance would be a good opportunity because all the images are, or the image is always the so same that you use. So, many situations where I have multiple instances of CheckMK. Right, exactly. Then I want to be uh, them to be identical as. as right, as much exactly. As possible. Yeah. So just that you know, it's everything is standardized, and if there's something you have to do, you know, yep. you have to do the same thing on every box, for example. So that would be um, standardization, um, and even another point could be that you have Linux knowledge within your organization. Um, but it's always an organizational hassle to get uh, uh, VMs, for example, or servers uh, uh, to run your application on. Or maybe the processes are just not carved out for your use case that you want to do. So you want to make sure your monitoring team or the persons responsible for the monitoring um, can manage the whole server, including the operating system. Yeah. And that's where you can use the appliance again because <laughs> uh, yeah, it's an appliance, I no matter what's inside. I know that from my own consulting time where some customers have a different department that manages the, the Linux servers. Mm -hmm. uh, and the monitoring guy is not allowed to do anything on the command line. Uh, it, he doesn't get root access. So sometimes it's very annoying because for every little thing he needs to wait for weeks. Yeah. And yeah. if you have the appliance, uh, it's your box. You can do what you want. And you even get root access, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so right, we exactly. don't lock it down. You can, you really can get root access and fiddle around with the operating system. Just if you, of course, if you destroy something, you need to fix it yourself. Or with the help of paid support, of course. Of course, But yeah. sometimes there are situations where it's uh, useful to get root access. So we are very open. We are an open source company. We don't want to lock out uh, users who very often really know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. So that's the, uh, the 
Yeah, but the, ap the appliance actually takes away this responsibility to work on the command line from you, but it doesn't strip it from you. So also you don't the necessity. So the necessity, yeah. So you don't have to use yeah. the command line, but if you want, you still can. So, some users uh, use the command line for installing special software that's not contained in the appliance. Usually, a normal appliance that wouldn't be possible, check and okay, you can, in fact, install third-party software if it's important for you. And if you know what you're doing, it still works, and you still benefit from all the web user interface for managing it. So. Right, exactly. But we have to say you can do that, of course. You can install additional software or change the firmware. But in the end, um, you have to uh, be careful with that because at some point the support uh, we can offer obviously has its limits. So if the system is uh, changed too much yes. um, or something is broken because of the modifications. But, but I think that's clear. So if, you, if, you, if your main goal is to modify the operating system, you wouldn't use the appliance. So it's just right. for a few additions yeah. or something. Yeah. And here I think it makes perfect sense. If it's minor sense, changes, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Also, uh, the, the hardware appliance has, uh, and also the software appliance have both built-in support for building an HA cluster. Uh, it's based on Heartbeat, DRBD, and all this uh, Linux HA stack. That yeah. stack is really, really complex. Even if you know the software and are experienced, you need a couple of days to set it up properly. Yeah, uh, right. We know that from experience, and for the appliance, we work together with, with uh, some of the software vendors uh, that create this HA stack. Um, and we have support from them and auditing and everything, so that's really solid yeah. and really super fast to set up. And there's good documentation on how to do it, but yeah. it's uh, uh, nearly self-explanatory. It's really just basically a few, few clicks on the web interface yeah. and your cluster is up and running. So Basically, you just need to select IP addresses that match uh, your, your, your setup, your environment. Right, yeah. And then you get the failover, also you can replace the broken node very easily and yeah, yeah. comes together um, as it should. That's I right. mean, failover is, is uh, complicated, but even more complicated is the, the rejoining of the, of the failed cluster up here prepared it. Yeah, the operation so in case something goes wrong. So yeah, yeah and that's built in. It's, uh, it's very convenient. It's tested, so right, it, yeah. really, it really works quite well. Exactly. Okay, maybe one, one yeah, more thing yeah. we didn't even mention, um, what maybe for some companies is the best part about the appliance, um, you get vendor support for the appliance. So if there's anything wrong, um, you can uh, uh, get vendor support. And if anything happens, uh, uh, we can chime in and help and uh, yeah, of course. repair stuff, no matter if it's the hardware or the virtual appliance. Um, also, also uh, usually if you're running an operating system like SUSE Linux, sometimes you will need to update the whole operating system, which can be quite complex. Uh, yeah. Also, there are cross-references to CheckMK because you also need to bring CheckMK to the new operating system. Right. And with the appliance, you get just a new firmware of the complete appliance and everything works. Yeah. It's basically the so same methods uh, uh, behind the curtain, but uh, you don't have to take care of it. Um, it just works. It's tested from our I side. Mean, it's even simpler because we don't uh, on the appliance we don't make updates of single packages. We update the complete firmware as in one piece. Yeah, yeah. So fewer things can can go wrong. Yeah, right. Yeah. And also uh, very important is, is security updates. So if there's some security yeah. issue, we provide a new firmware for the appliance. Of course. Yeah. Some log for J bug or some shell hack or some th that can happen even in open source software. Exactly. Yeah. So we provide a new image for the appliance, and y you can update it with via the web interface. Yeah, it's really easy. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're interested in the appliance, check out our web page. Um, you find uh, all the details there. We are planning some future videos about the appliance. So stay tuned, and we see you soon. Ho I hope.